Autumn is a season that brings beautiful scenery, but it is also a time that railway operators dread. From late September through to December, falling leaves can spell trouble, creating a unique set of challenges that require specialist intervention. Today on UK Railvids, we're exploring the world of railhead treatment trains, or for short, RHTTs. The problem of leaves on the line isn't new, but it may be a source of jokes today for the median commuters, but for network rail and operators, it's a serious issue. When leaves fall onto the line, they're crushed by trains, creating a slick, telephone-like residue on the rails, making them slippery and reducing adhesion. In the past, steam locomotives and first-generation diesels could manage this better due to their heavy weight and the use of their thread brakes, which cleaned wheels with each rotation. However, as lighter diesel and electric multiple units emerged in the 1950s and beyond, the problem worsened. These trains were lighter, with each axle bearing less weight, and often used disc brakes that didn't clean the wheels. As a result, the leaves would form a compact, insulating layer that would not only reduce grip, but also disrupt track circuits, causing signaling issues and even making trains disappear from the control system. In the late 1970s, British Rail researched and introduced a solution involving a material called sandite, a mixture of sand, aluminium and adhesive. When applied to the rails, sandite improved traction by providing a rougher surface, allowing the wheel to grip the rail. Initially, the solution was applied using converted passenger vehicles, often outdated multiple units, such as in the southern region, where Southern Railway four subunits dating back to the 1940s were converted into class 930s, which were then used all the way until 2004 under rail track. These units being fitted with hoppers, pumps and spray systems. These makeshift trains were affected, but limited in capacity and technology of the era. In July of 1989, Railtrack invested in purpose-built vehicles, leading to introduction of 22 MPVs, or multi-purpose vehicles, built by Windhoff in Germany. These modular units could switch between tasks, including railhead cleaning and sandite application, making them highly useful. Fast forward to today, Network Rail deploys a fleet of over 60 dedicated railhead treatment trains, consisting of 32 MPVs and 29 locomotive hall consists. These modern railhead treatment trains are equipped with high-pressure pumps, capable of delivering water at 1500 bar, which allows debris to be blasted from the rail surface. Most units are also fitted with sandite tanks for simultaneous cleaning and adhesion treatment. Aside from the previously mentioned MPVs, railhead treatment trains are powered by various types of locomotives across the UK. In the southeast, you'll commonly see Class 66, Class 73s, and even newer Class 69s operated by GB Rail Freight. The southwestern Chilterns are served by DB Cargo's Class 66 and 67s. In the Midlands, College Rail operates Class 56s, with Class 66s also making appearances, while Direct Rail Services or DRS employs Class 37s or Class 20s in Anglia and Northern England. In Scotland, MPVs are the primary workhorses, though local-hauled RHTTs are often left by Class 37s, with Class 67s being used occasionally. Each loco hauled rail treatment train set is outfitted with specialised modules. These include powerful pumps, water tanks and sandite applicators mounted on FEA container flat wagons. These trains are top and tailed with locomotives at both ends, ensuring seamless operation on complex routes. The water jets clean the rail surface and if needed, a sandite layer follows to enhance traction. This is vital for preventing wheel slip, which can lead to significant disruptions, including delays, signal failures and costly wheel flats. While the image of leaves on the line might sound trivial, the consequences of untreated tracks are anything but. When tracks are left untreated and adhesion is compromised, trains can struggle to stop at signals or stations. This can lead to severe operational issues and, in the most extreme cases, collisions. In 2021, a collision between two trains in Salisbury served as a stark reminder of the dangers. An investigation by the Rail Accident Investigation Branch found that low adhesion from leaves on the line was a key contributing factor to the incident. Most recently, in 2024, two passenger trains collided on the Cumbrian line in Wales. While the full accident report is still ongoing, preliminary findings suggest that low adhesion played a role in the accident as well. These incidents highlight the very real risks associated with low adhesion on the railway. When trains lose grip, the consequences can be severe, impacting not only the smooth run of the network, but also the safety of passengers and crew. This is why the work of railhead treatment trains is essential. High pressure water jets combined with the adhesion treatment from Sandite ensure that trains can maintain grip stopping safely at red signals and preventing potentially catastrophic outcomes. RHTTs cover extensive routes across the UK. Running circuits then last up to 20 hours with only minimal breaks for refilling. Key depots like those at York, Inverness, Wigan, Eastleigh, Tunbridge and many other depots across the UK serve their bases during the season. So the next time you see leaves on the track, 
remember the hard work and technology behind the scenes, from the high pressure jets of the railhead treatment trains to the sand dike they lay down, ensuring trains can run safely and on time. They might not carry passengers or freight, but they're the guardians of Britain's rail network each autumn. We hope you enjoyed this video and hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.